Jason Palliser here, and uh, today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about short sales and a few of the logistics, okay? So, especially uh, especially when the market's changing, so listen up and uh, and stay tuned and uh, till the end, and we're gonna give you some good information or whatever. Short sales, here's why it's important. In today's environment and uh, in shifting environments, which happens in cycles, I've been doing this 20-something years, uh, short sales are a very, very, very good technique to grab good real estate deals. And here's the fun part about this. You can turn what might look like an okay real estate deal into a super deal um, if you start to explore doing short sales when you uncover a motivated seller. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about short sales, some of the logistics, the things that you need to think about. Hey, and before I get into everything, uh, I'm sure you've seen some of the other videos that we've done, so real quick, go click to subscribe. Uh, hit the bell to be notified when we drop more good content. Uh, stuff that you're competitors don't have in the marketplace because that's what we do, we drop good stuff. And then you're set to go. So every time we give you good information and we get delivered to the marketplace, you're notified, your phone lights up, and now you're a better investor. So strongly suggest that you do that. Uh, welcome to the family, okay? But now let's get back to short sale stuff. When does a short sale um, present itself? This is when you have a seller that you talk to that you find out they owe too much money versus what it's worth. Um, so there's three big factors at play here. One, they owe a little bit too much money for what any investor would pay, right? And there's too much work between what's owed and what's work, uh, what work needs to be done uh, versus the value of the property. So a lot of times it's upside down. A house does not have to be upside down for you to do a short sale, okay? So this is a situation where somebody's underwater, okay? So there's not enough equity or there's zero equity. This is when a short sale situation arises. Now, what is a short sale? Um, a short sale is where a bank that has a loan on it or an institution that has a loan on it says, hey, you, they owe us a hundred grand. You're painting the picture to us here that uh, we're never gonna get our hundred grand because it's upside down, there's a lot of work. If we take, you're basically telling the bank, hey, look, if you take this lemon back, then you're gonna have to fix it up and, and it's, you're, you're gonna be into it for more than what you can get out of it, right? So what a bank is willing to do, once you paint the good picture, which we'll talk about, what a bank is willing to do is take less from that hundred grand. They may accept that uh, they may accept the payoff of seventy grand just to be done with it. That's what a short sale. You're selling a house short of what is owed on a property. That is what a short sale is um, by definition. Okay. Now, having said that, let's start breaking it down a little bit. If you are a bank, I'm assuming just. I've been a banker for 25 years, so I have a lot of experience in this sandbox. So think about this. If it was Jason Bank and you bank, insert your name here, okay? If it was our bank and we had a $100,000 loan on a house, and not only are they not paying on it, which we were hoping to get on-time payments and get our return on investment, that's why we lend out money, but it's not happening, so it's already a lemon for us. Now all of a sudden, somebody, which is the, the investor being you, gets permission from the homeowner to talk directly to the bank and say, hey, look, they're talking to us now. Remember me and you are the bank. All of a sudden an investor gets permission uh, to talk to us through the homeowner and say, hey, look, they're not making payments and this house, you, they owe a little too much versus what needs to be done to it versus what it could sell for. And now they're talking to us as a bank. We're not, you know, it's it sucks. The situation sucks for us, but um, we don't really want to, lose money on it, but then also we don't want to go down this rabbit hole of trying, having to take the house back, getting attorneys involved, getting REO agents on the back end. Someone's going to have to fix it. Banks don't come to work every day. Bankers don't come to work every day with tools in their pocket and uh, they don't come with drywall strapped to their back, right? So having said that, they'll be open to having the conversation. Uh, this is where you're going to paint the picture to them on why they might want to do a short sale. Allow the sale of the house short of what's owed on it, right? And um, so you have to paint that picture. But a lot of times, the proper, most of the time, it's because the property is upside down. I'm not going to go down some dark, uh, deep, dark hole uh, here about why banks would would do that. But I'm going to give you one easy one that I know you probably don't think of. And when I do, you're like, I'm going to focus on short sales. You've shown me the light, Jason. Um, Mike's in the background giggling because... <laughs> I do stupid stuff, that's what I do. Um, so here's what I mean. Things that you may not know that are you maybe in glancing at a, at a glance on a piece of paper or, or pass in passing, you might've heard it, but it goes in, in one ear and out the other. Some, you understand that like 
banks lend money to people. And a lot of times they also put mortgage insurance on it, right? So somebody doesn't have 20% to put down, which most homeowners don't. And so they require insurance on that mortgage. So even though uh, somebody's five grand, 10 grand behind on payments and the house might be upside down, these banks that lent out the money since the homeowner didn't have 20% have also been making that homeowner pay insurance. It's an insurance policy. So think about this. What if they do a short sale? Do you think a bank would be more apt to do a short sale with you if there was mortgage insurance on it? Then insurance covers them if they sell that loan for a loss. So now even though there's 100 owed on it, since there was mortgage insurance on it, just like you have insurance on your house, if something happens, the insurance pays for it. Well, it insures this bank to where if it's 100 grand owed on the property and they, they go ahead and agree to take 80 grand and, and that's the full payoff. So they're losing 20 grand, that insurance would cover it or some portion of it. So do you see where banks might be apt to go ahead if you paint the right picture? They might be okay with go ahead and saying, you know what, uh, we'll accept a shorter payoff. So that's what a short sale situation is, okay? Now, what do you need to do? Here's what I want you to understand. There's a few logistics to try and make this happen if you uncover this. Um, here's why. A lot of investors don't go after deals that on paper, I hope you're listening, that on paper look like they don't have equity. It's because no one's ever walked them through certain things you need to do um, to maybe get a short sale done and turn it into a super deal. Okay, so here's what I want you to understand about this. You get permission to talk to the bank. That's number one, okay? You get permission to talk to the bank from the homeowner. That's number one. So you can start talking to them saying, hey, you're going to paint the picture that there's work needed on this property, okay? So you're going to talk to the bank like, hey, this property isn't in good working order. It needs paint. The roof needs to be fixed. There's some doors that are, that are cracked, windows that need to be re replaced. The flooring's buckling up. Whatever the situation is, uh, there's five grand in landscaping. The more you can paint the picture and be detailed, here, here's, here's what beginner investors do, okay? Again, you're getting permission to talk to the bank to start painting. If you paint the picture, you may get a deal, okay? Here's what most investors do. Oh, it needs 30 grand and work. Uh, well, that really doesn't work that well with the bank just because they're like 30 grand and what? Are you going to put in a 30 grand gold plated bathroom, which is over improving the house? So one tip for you is that you need to really zone in on doing a detailed breakdown of all the things that need to be fixed on this property. The better you are at doing that and, and the better you are at showing them a, a line item bid from an actual contractor, uh, the more apt they are to, gonna be, to be able to come down and do a short payoff, which is a short sale, right? And um, so that's one thing that you need to do. The second thing that you need to do is you need to provide them right out of the gate with what you think the, um, what you think the future value might be. And of course, you're probably going to go with a little lower number um, because then it makes it, um, it, makes it look like the, the bank's going to have a little bit more work to do, right? A lot of times they're going to they're gonna want to know what uh, you need to be ready with a detailed explanation of why the homeowner is not going to be able to pull themselves out of this. So why the homeowner is not going to be able to catch it up. You could tell them, hey, they're only making two grand a month. Their bills are four grand a month. Uh, they're in a pickle now. They've had a medical situation. So you need to paint the picture on why the homeowner isn't going to be able to pull out of this hole. Those two things will get the ball rolling for you. And then so what's going to happen is that you're, you're basically negotiating back and forth with the bank now to see if they'll accept a shorter payoff. OK, and a lot of times they will, because here's why I think about this. I said it before. The bank is in business to get a return on the loan that they gave. They're not really in business to take houses, market houses, keep, cut the grass on houses, fix up the houses. Again, they don't they don't come to work. Bankers don't come to work with a lawnmower. You freaking kidding me? They don't come to work with a set of tools. They don't come to work with buckets of paint. And so. Uh, that's the last thing on earth they want to do. They're, they're not in the business of owning and managing properties. Otherwise, they would just do it and they wouldn't lend out money uh, to end borrowers that qualified originally. This is where you come in. You paint the picture, itemize bid, showing them that there's a lot of work to be done. Then you tell them what you think the future value is. Now, if they agree that they're open to it, here's what they're probably going to do. They're going to ask for a BPO from a, a licensed realtor in your town. So it's basically a BPO is a broker price opinion. They're, they're going to get an opinion without basically one step short of doing a full blown appraisal. They're going to, so you need to have a realtor ready. Okay. So if you're taking notes, have a realtor ready uh, that can do a BPO for you. Sometimes they pick their own, but sometimes you could suggest it and they'll use the one um, that you suggest. So, uh, 
Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So just be prepared that one of the steps here to get to the finish line. Um, so one of the steps to get to the finish line is getting a BPO done on what a broker price opinion. Hey, I think when it's all done and fixed up, it could be worth this. They'll ask for that from you or they may get it on their own. So what needs to be done to it, the borrower's situation that, that can't fix the situation and then a BPO, all those things together are for them to review. And then again, no, negotiate back and forth with them. They may say, well, we think this, you think that. But now all of a sudden, because you've got permission to talk to them, it's just a negotiation and you're negotiating that hundred grand down, right? To try and get it down to a number that works for you, 60, 70, 80, because maybe you know it's worth 140 all fixed up and you negotiate the $100,000 payoff down to 70. Um, so they approved your short sale, right? And then you know it needs 30 grand in work and you could potentially make $40,000, right? So it's you painting the picture. So what you need to understand is these are the big main components to make that happen. Now, the other thing that you need to know is this, if they approve it, again, I've been doing this for a long, long time, thousands of transactions under my belt. They don't wanna know, they don't wanna think that you're in cahoots with a homeowner. So what they do is they, banks a lot of times will put different levels of protection to make sure that this transaction is above board. One of them is being that it has to at least be listed with a realtor, meaning they'll take 70 grand, it has to be listed with a realtor. But if you're working with a realtor, you're basically giving that realtor a listing. One, they'll love you. And two, if you're working with them and you've worked out this uh, short sale, don't you know exactly the day it's gonna be listed and what it's gonna be listed for? You work with that realtor, the moment it's listed, you write a contract, they accept it, you get the deal, you make your 40 grand. Hopefully that starts to break this down for you. Now, take a step back. Don't, don't forget where we've gone on our journey here in this short sale sandbox that we're talking about, okay? What did I say earlier? Don't you wanna play in sandboxes where most investors don't play? Most investors just, I followed this guru and this guru said 70% off of this minus repairs and I make my low ball offer and get my spread and that's all they do. When they see something that looks like there's too much money out on it, they make weird noises they're like, they do all this crazy crap and uh, make weird noises. I don't even know where they learned to do that. Like, that ain't a deal. But really? Okay, thank you. So from this day forward, you should be saying thank you uh, because they follow all these regular gurus who say they get the same five lists and send postcards and text messages and you magically get deals. Come on. So all these things that we're breaking down, uh, when we do a two-day blueprint, we've done thousands of transactions. I've done this for hedge funds that need a thousand homes in a city, 2,000 homes. One of my friends that I work with at, at a hedge fund level, um, I've helped do 9,000 properties. Folks, we suffocate a city 30 different ways. I'm, I'm playing in one of the 30 sandboxes for you right now. We teach you, we teach you at a level that's unfair to your competition. So if you want more information on it, um, just put a comment below or hit us up. Um, you can schedule a call at my number two dayblueprint.com and I'm sure we'll put it in the description as well. My two, the number two, my two dayblueprint.com. Schedule a call to talk to us, but we suffocate a city 30 different ways. We show you how to do direct mail for free. Well, that destroys all the competition in, in your city because now you can be in every mailbox, right? So we'll show you how we do this at a level that suffocates a city and uncovers motivated seller after motivated seller after motivated seller. So hopefully you enjoyed this. This is the way that we play in the short sale sandbox and I'll, we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to click subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified uh, the moment we drop good content and we will turn you into a super investor. And if you're interested in seeing what we do to win deals without a big budget, because that's what we do for the hedge funds, then go to my2dayblueprint.com and simply schedule a call to talk to us. We're more than happy to talk, to talk to you about you, your business, what you're trying to do in your city. So stay tuned. We got more good stuff coming. Talk to you later. Bye.